Welcome, travelers, to my realm of nightmares. Allow me to be your personal assistant. Come in, take a seat, get comfortable. For when you step into my realm, there's no stepping out. Hello, travelers. PA Nightmares here. I've noticed that over 30% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. So, if you're a new or returning viewer and you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what I do, liking the video and commenting as well, as it really helps push this video into the algorithm and it really does help the channel grow. Well, I've taken enough of your time. On to the main event. Brian pressed the blade into Dennis's neck, almost to the point of breaking the skin. What? What the fuck are you doing? That's not the real me. Dennis stammered as he panicked. I could see him visibly shaking. Ash and Sean took a few steps back up the stairs towards me. Brian grabbed Dennis by the collar and threw him to the ground, knife still pressed to his neck. I knew it, he said. I knew there was something weird about the way you were acting. Brian, I swear, I never took that picture, I swear. Shut up, where's Dennis? What happened to him? There's pure aggression in Brian's voice. I am Dennis, I never took the photo. You have to believe me, man, that wasn't me. Dennis did sound like he was genuinely panicking, but we had all heard it before. What do they mean? Ash asked sheepishly, looking terrified. It means that Dennis has been taken. Whatever that thing is that had me upstairs, it has Dennis too. This isn't the real Dennis, and we need to get as far away from it as quickly as possible. I took another step back. I was now back on the second floor, looking down. Brian was still in the last couple of steps, holding Dennis with a knife to his throat. He was in a fit of rage I'd never seen him in before as he screamed in Dennis's face. Fucking leave us alone. Let us leave. Just let us leave and we'll never come back. Dennis pleaded with him. Please, Brian, you need to listen to me, man. I'm, I'm me. I never took any photo. What the fuck would I even use to take a photo? He has a point to be fair, Ash piped up. Where would he have gotten a Polaroid camera from? What he used to take the photo is irrelevant. The Polaroid itself is significant, not how it came to be. I informed him. Ash looked at me confused. As we watched the struggle between Brian and Dennis, I could see a dark silhouette climbing the ladder. My heart stopped. Messy, wild, colorful hair on a pure chocolate face. Two tiny glowing red eyes like lasers trained on us. The dripping red paint around the mouth. Jagged stained teeth formed a menacing grin. I could see the familiar baggy black and white checkered suit stained red with blood. Welcome to hell, children. <laughs> That shrill voice made my bones itch. I could see Brian partially release Dennis as he watched a clown still climbing the ladder, making its way up. Dennis slipped from under Brian's grasp and backed away. Ash and Sean stepped back some more. Sean tripped and fell, but never took his eyes off the advancing clown. Whoa, 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 what is that? Sean stammered, sliding back, kicking rubble as his feet slid on the ground. The clown moved in a jerking fashion. Its gaze alternated between all of us, then met my eyes. I looked away. I was speechless. One hand on the crumbling first stair. Brian was still frozen. The clown grabbed his leg and began to pull Brian over. Brian tried to pull himself back up, but couldn't get a grip onto anything. The clown laughed and tugged at his leg. I snapped into action. I carefully ran down the remaining stairs and grabbed Brian's hand. Someone, grab a knife or something. I screamed to the top of the stairs. The clown Welcome repeated its phrase over children. and over again Welcome as its head hell, shook and its hand children. pulled. They were still just standing at the top watching. Did anyone hear me? Fucking help! I screamed again. I saw Dennis coming down with a knife in his hand. My heart sank a little. I wasn't too sure how this would play out. He reached to me and took another two steps down until he was level with Brian's head. I closed my eyes as Dennis raised the knife. I heard frantic hacking sounds and ear-piercing screams. I opened my eyes. 
Dennis had almost chopped the clown's arm off. He brought the large blade down two or three more times, and the clown almost fell backwards as Brian was quickly released. Brian made a swift move forward and booted the clown in the face. Fucking, fucking clown. He cried, his voice shaking with fear and anger. I peered over the edge. The clown was gone. Its arm remained with a tight grip on Brian's leg, but the clown was completely gone. Get this thing off me. Brian said as he desperately pulled at the severed arm. Everyone, just get down, now. Get down and get out of here, now. Brian commanded. We all obeyed. We climbed down the ladder. Brian went first, then I went. Happy to not fall off this time. Dennis next. And as I bolted to the door, Dennis held the ladder steady for Ash and Sean. The front door was closed, but I could see cracks of light through the splintered wood. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. We almost fell in a heap as we scrambled through the door. Ash emerged and fell immediately to the grass. Then Sean, who stopped at the threshold and looked back to Dennis. There was an almighty clatter of metal from inside. It sounded like the ladder. Dennis? Sean replied as he darted back inside. Ash looked shocked. He got up and looked inside to see what was going on. Oh my god, Dennis, he said as he disappeared back into the building. Brian and I approached the doorway cautiously. We could see them moving around, picking Dennis up off the ground. 10 or 15 seconds later, Ash and Sean came walking out with Dennis hanging over their shoulder. The ladder fell and smacked his head, Sean said. Dennis had blood soaked hair with some dribbling down his face. He can't drive then. Someone grab his keys, Brian said, holding on his hand. Ash fumbled around in one of Dennis's pockets and produced a car key. We found a slit in the fence and let Ash and Sean maneuver Dennis through. I could feel eyes on me from somewhere. I didn't feel threatened, I just felt like I was being watched. I turned and looked the old bell tower up and down. I vowed to myself I would never return to this place. As my gaze reached the top and one of the arches, Liam sat on the stone ledge watching us. He looked exactly like I remembered him from five years ago. I waved at him. He didn't respond. He looked sad. My gut wrenched seeing him look normal again. I felt crippling guilt. Brian looked at me as I was holding my hand up. What are you doing? He said as he turned and looked up. It's Liam, I replied, looking to see his reaction. Brian looked and I looked back. He was gone. Barely a word was spoken in the car. Ash, Sean, and Dennis sat in the back. I sat in the front and Brian drove. He dropped the guys at Sean's house and assured Dennis he would drop me off and return the car before walking home. Dennis didn't seem to care. They were all too quick to get out of the car and rush into Sean's house. The sun was low in the sky. The light burned my eyes. It felt nice driving with the windows down. The air cooled my face and made me feel better. My body and my mind felt exhausted. Never again, Brian said. It was the first thing he had said the whole journey. Definitely never again. I replied, I really meant it. I would never, ever set foot within the perimeter of that fence. Brian pulled up to my house and parked. He looked at me. He wanted to say something, but couldn't. I could see sadness in his eyes. Liam's never coming back. We just need to accept that and move on. He said eventually. I know. I hate carrying that guilt with me everywhere, every day. Brian put his hand on my shoulder. I know, Danny. I do too. But we'll get through it, man. Always stick together, no matter what. I nodded. I got out of the car and Brian drove away. Nobody seemed to be home, so I went in, got some water, and went to my room to lie down. I needed to have a bath or something to help with the pains all over my body, but I was just too tired. I was watching a TV program called Still Game. I wanted something funny to try and take my mind off everything. Before I knew it, I must have blacked out at some point. It was nighttime. The TV was about 12 episodes ahead of where I last remember. I had a couple of text messages and a few missed calls from Brian. The first one was some four hours ago. It read, Just dropped the car off at Sean's. 
tried to see how Dennis was doing, but they wouldn't answer the door. On my way home now. Hope you're all right, mate. The next message from only 30 minutes ago said, I tried phoning a few times. You okay, Denny? I should probably phone him. Something tapped my window. Tap. I froze. Tap. It happened again. Tap, tap. I was scared stiff. My phone buzzed. Another text from Brian. It was probably him trying to get my attention at the window. I picked my phone up and walked over, feeling a little more relaxed. Brian wasn't there. Illuminated by the dim street light, three figures stood in the road, staring up at my window. I could just make out who it was. Ash, Dennis, and Sean. Their slightly distorted faces all stared right at me, beckoning me down. Their glowing yellow eyes held my gaze. I shuddered. I was startled when my phone started ringing. Brian was phoning me. I put the phone to my ear without saying anything. I couldn't think of any words. Danny, something weird as fuck just happened. I'm gonna try and come round to yours, man. I don't want to be by myself. Brian sounded frantic. Don't, I said. What? Don't, Brian, I replied. He was silent for a while. Are, are they there, too? He asked quietly, stuttering. But they're here. Shit, how is that possible? I'm looking at him right now, out my window. Brian said, sounding absolutely bewildered. I couldn't understand it myself. They were at his house too? My train of thought was interrupted by Brian talking. What's going on, man? How'd this happen? He continued. I couldn't tell if he was asking me directly or asking himself rhetorically. I, I don't know, I said. But we shouldn't go anywhere near them. Just stay inside. I heard the bells coming from Brian's in through the phone speaker. Brian sighed. Do you hear that? I heard it, but only through the phone. I need to go, man. I'm putting my headphones in. Sick of hearing the fucking bells. Brian sounded almost hysterical and quickly hung up before I could even say goodbye. Don't go outside. I quickly shouted down the phone just to remind him whether he heard me or not. I couldn't tell you. When the line went dead, I could still hear the bells. They gradually got louder. I glanced out the window once more. They were still standing there, waving me down. <laughs> no fucking chance. It's been just over a week now, and every night they come, every single night the bells ring. Every single night the bells ring at midnight, and without fail, they're outside my house. Sometimes Liam's with them, sometimes not. I haven't spoken to Brian in a while. I'm just hoping, praying, that I don't look out one night and he's joined them. I should probably phone him and make sure he's okay and remind him not to go outside. Tonight's story was the finale of Season 2, Part 5 of the Scotland Bell Tower series. If you enjoyed this series, please let the author Reggae Junkie know. His links to his Reddit will be in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed the voices of As The Raven Dreams and Vith22, please go check out their channels and let them know PA sent you. The links to their channel will be in the description below. Hey, did you know I have merch? Well, I do. Crazy, right? And if you like to walk around representing my realm and gaining new trailers, the links to my merch store as well as all my other social medias will be in the description below. As always, I'd like to say a special thank you to all my lovely Patreons. Two forty-two reads. Rando Calrissian. Seraphine the Midnight Bard. Creepy Clown Girl. Mia Mina. Hair Raising Narratives. Spooky Boo. Scary Story Time. Lycan Trucker and Pimp Demon. If you'd like to join these lovely travelers but a light on fire, you can do so by becoming a Patreon as well. Please remember the support is always appreciated, but it's never expected. Please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and ding that bell if you're new for all future content, as it really helps this channel grow and pushes my videos out into the algorithm. But as always, travelers, once you step into my realm, there's no Stepping 
Uh...